I'm going to work with wafer paper and today I'm using Saracina wafer paper and Saracina wafer paper is 0.27 millimeters. The closest version here in the States is old grade wafer paper which is 0.22 millimeters. And usually if you ever worked with wafer paper, wafer paper has two sides and one side you can see is bumpy and the other side is smooth side. They are absolutely Absolutely equal you can use whatever you want it is just your personal preference for me I prefer to use my bumpy side as my face side just because I find it gives a little bit more texture and visual interest to my flowers and wafer paper creations so here is my template I already started to cut my pieces and I cut a little bit more than I need to so to transfer your flower template to your wafer paper you can do this a few different ways you can use an edible marker and trace it around I usually if I don't want to cut my template I usually use the end of my Dresden tool and I just trace gently so I can have this indentations and it's good enough for me to cut my template so here you can probably see better on this side and because i need two pieces for the large one i'm going to cut my wafer paper fold it in half because these pieces are symmetrical and i'm going to cut this around and if you're using a cutting machine you can do that for sure it will make your life easier especially if you need to make quite a few flowers at the same time so now what I have here is my left side, my right side. I have my central part, my head, not my hand, but orchid's head. And this is arms and these are legs. And I have a few extra pieces just in case if I need them. I'm not going to wire my wafer paper orchid, but I'll show you how you can use a piece of wire if you want to have it wired on your cake. So I'll take my flower pad. That's to soften my wafer paper. I'm going to use my EC tonic recipe. This is a non-alcohol wafer paper conditioner that consists of food grade glycerin and water. I already have my mixture premixed here because it just makes my life easier to use it. And I have a few different size of petal shapers because for this larger ones I'm going to use this one and for smaller ones we'll see which size will speak to me. So first thing to do if you want to soften your wafer paper, you want to vein or add any texture to your wafer paper, you need to use just a little bit of my conditioner recipe and you can see I'm using a relatively large brush and apply thin amount to both sides of my wafer paper petal and I'm going to stick it to my floral pot so you can see it is stuck and now it is not going anywhere and it will not going to be misshapen and same for the left large petal a little bit of my conditioner on both sides and stick it to my flower pot then what I'm going to do for the large ones is I'm going to take just a touch of cornstarch. If your climate is dry or your wafer paper is cracking when you're trying to shape it, you can skip on using cornstarch all as well. So I just need to make sure that I can release my wafer paper petal from my floral pad and it's not going to be sticky. And then I'll take my ball tool, medium-sized ball tool, and I will run it around just gently to curl it and make it round. Like this. And to add a little bit texture, I will use my Dresden tool, the sharp side of my Dresden tool, and add maybe a few lines to make it not look like a piece of paper. And I'm running my lines from the center, so this is part this part is going to be my center to the end. Make sure I like the shape. And I will place it on my petal former and stretch it to leave it to dry. 
while my wafer paper is still a little bit soft or moist, it will take on any shape at this moment. So these are my two large petals. I will put it aside and I will take my next two petals. These are legs. Arms we just made one. So again, if you're going to download your orchid template, you will receive my non-alcohol conditioner recipe as well. So if you want to know the exact measurements, it's in the description down below to make sure that it's not sticky. And I'm working on my bumpy side as my th face side. So when I'm going to shape it, I will put my bumpy side up, my right pedal and my left pedal. And again, I will take my ball tool depends so the size of your ball tool depends on the size of your petal and how curly you want it to be wafer paper is relatively easy to shape if you have just enough conditioner but if you want them to be even curlier or more interesting you can do that for sure and a few lines using my sharp end of my dresden tool i will make sure it's stretched and I will put it on my former to dry. Because I don't want my wafer paper to be flat. Even if it's wafer paper. And even orchids are relatively flat flowers, I would say. And same for the large one. This is going to be an uh, orchid head. So this petal is going to be my top one. And I'm using the largest ball tool because I wanted to have even more curlier look. Few lines here and there. And depends on your humidity, uh, when you're working in your place, you might don't even need to add any conditioner or cornstarch. Just try and test with different petals and different shapes. And you will see sometimes it depends. Here and now it's 35% humidity, so I definitely need to use my conditioner. And let's shape the last petal. Not the petal, but the central side. Gentle, because it's a tiny piece. And I will leave it for an extra second on my flower pot before shaping, because I wanted to make sure that this is soft. So now when my central piece is soft, I'm taking my smaller ball tool to shape the surrounded parts. And I'm pressing relatively firm until I can see that it's moving. And for this part, I'm going to use the thick side of my Dresden tool and just gently press it to curl. Turn it upside down. Place my Dresden tool thick side on one of the pieces and move it towards me. And same for the other one. And now we have our orchid center. And I will use this smaller shaper and will place it inside to dry before coloring and assembling. And if you want to use wire and you want to wire your wafer paper, what you will need is just a piece of wire. This is 20 gauge and I'm going to make a little hook and make it flat. And I'm going to take a small piece of wafer paper and take my wafer paper glue. So what I need is to soften my piece of wafer paper enough to attach to my wire. And this is going to be our central central part. If you don't want to use wire, you just need to make this part without any wire inside. Like that. And try to stretch your wafer paper because then it will make it stick much easier. I'm shaping that. If you watched my Christmas uh, holiday tutorial how to make wafer paper berries, that's the similar method I used over there. And then you can even use your sharp side of your Dresden tool and press and create this shape in the middle. So now it looks like this. And that's how we're going to assemble our orchid.
I will take my pliers and fold it over and stretch it to cover my wire. So this is going to be my central central part. I'll put it aside to dry for a second. I'll take a small piece of wafer paper that is going to be my base. I will start playing around with my petals. So this is my head, my left arm, right arm and legs. On my small piece of wafer paper, I'm going to apply more than I need. You can skip the step, you don't need to make the center part, tiny part, but I find it just easier if you're just starting out with wafer paper. I'm going to apply a thin layer of my wafer paper glue, which is made out of wafer paper scraps melted in water. And I will place my first petal, my right leg, second one, and the large one on top. That I'm going to place my arms here in the middle, right and left. And you can see already we have a shape, our orchid shape. And that at this moment you can adjust it or you can use any former or shaper if you want to make it even more curlier or cupped. It depends on your need. Uh, but at this moment, if you want to have a little bit more space in between your petals, you can use a few cosmetic sponges and wedges and just insert under your large petals so it is going to look like it has a little bit more movement a few here and there because i use just a tiny amount of wifi paper glue in the middle it softened my wifi paper petals enough so i can play around and make them look the way i want my final flower to look like and let's check on our middle size just a little bit of wafer paper glue here in the middle and my central part like this i'm making sure that everything is stuck together and if you made your piece like this out of wafer paper what you need to do is you just need to answer this through your wafer paper orchid and then you will be done And then what is left is to leave it to dry for a few moments. Again, it depends on your humidity. And you have your beautiful wafer paper orchid in almost no time. And to color my wafer paper, I'm going to use gel colors, yellow and alcohol. Because at this stage, wafer paper is very, not fragile, but really easy to mess it up with the amount of moisture. So I'm going to take just a little bit of yellow gel color. I'm using artisan accents because that's what I use for my colored gels. And I'm going to mix it with alcohol. This is high proof alcohol. You can use vodka, but be careful with the humidity and try to be just extra cautious with your amount of moisture you're applying to your wafer paper. And because this color is yellow, it should be relatively visible on my wafer paper parts. And I'm going to lightly paint with alcohol. And you can look on the internet and see all the patterns orchids can have and you can color to the color of your cake or anything in between. And for my stripes and my dark pieces, I will take just a touch of airbrush color. This is maroon because I think that very small amount of things in nature are actually in black or actual white color. So I prefer to use something in shades like maroon or ivory to make it more realistic or nature inspired looking. And I'm going to take tiny, tiny brush with my maroon color and paint just a few strokes here and there to emphasize my center. And because I have 
few drops of alcohol on my center, you can see that these spots are relatively realistic looking because they get absorbed by the alcohol in yellow gel color mixture. And of course you can dust your wafer paper, but if you're going to dust wafer paper, what you need to do is you need to wait until it's fully dry and you can handle this. And then you can dust using just a dry brush and dry petal dust in any color you want. I would suggest you if you want to make it look even more realistic, at this point you can use just a little bit of green dust here around this areas or you can make it pink or any color you want thank you so much for joining me for this week's demonstration i hope you like this tutorial and i hope you will try to make wafer paper orchids me before your valentine's day decorations or for the upcoming wedding season i hope this year is not going to be as crazy as the previous one and if you would like to learn more about working with wafer paper, I would love to invite you to join one of my live workshops. Click the link down below so you can get all the details. We have quite a few live workshops coming up next. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I'll be back next week with another tutorial. My name is Anastashkina. Bye-bye.